In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. And my brothers and sisters, as we come to this Mass on this Tuesday, the second week of Ordinary Time, we take a moment to call to mind our sins, and to ask God to truly help us as we come to accept his will in our lives. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve for Saul, whom I have rejected as king of Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. But Samuel replied, How can I go? Saul will hear of it and kill me. To this the Lord answered, Take a half hour along and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I myself will tell you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I point out to you. Samuel did as the Lord had commanded him. When he entered Bethlehem, the elders of the city came trembling to meet him and inquired, Is your vis visit peaceful, O seer? He replied, Yes, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. So cleanse yourselves and join me today for the banquet. He also had Jesse and his sons cleanse themselves and invited them to the sacrifice. As they came, he looked at Elab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because he sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. Then Jesse called Aminadab, and presented him before Samuel, who said, The Lord has not chosen him. Next Jesse presented Shammah, but Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. In the same way Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is he. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. When Samuel took his leave, he went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I found David, my servant. I found David, my servant. Once you spoke in a vision, and to your faithful ones you said, On a champion I have placed a crown over the people I have set a youth. I found David, my servant. I have found David my servant, with my holy oil I have anointed him, that my hand may always that my hand may be always with him, and my arm may make him strong. I found David my servant. He shall say of me, You are my father, my God the rock, my Saviour, and I will make him the firstborn, highest of the kings of the earth. 
I found David, my servant. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was passing through a field of grain on the Sabbath, his disciples began to make a path while picking the heads of grain. At this the Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He said to them, Have you never read what David did when he was in need and he and his companions were hungry? How he went into the house of God when... Abithar was high priest and ate the bread of offering that only priests could lawfully eat and shared it with his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. That is why the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, it's good to be with you for this Mass today. And you know, our gospel reading is one that has taken on a lot more meaning since I've been ordained a priest for me personally. That the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And how Jesus redefines what the Sabbath is all about to the Pharisees. I have to admit, the way that I used to celebrate Sunday before I was a priest is very different than the way I celebrate it now. You know, back in the day, I never worked on Sunday. I would take that as a family day, a more restful day. And as a seminarian, I mean, Sunday would be a day where I would try to fast a bit more. Not these days. When you have lots of masses, there's lots of work to do. Sunday is one of my busiest days of the week. And fasting, well, the church says that a priest has to do the hour-long fast before the first mass, but doesn't have to fast for subsequent, I can tell you that I have grabbed a peanut butter sandwich more than once between my three to four masses on Sunday just to keep going. And it's an interesting thing because oftentimes eating my peanut butter sandwich, I make sure that I'm not really seeing because I don't want to scandalize the kids who say, look, pottery is eating, pottery is eating, we're not supposed to eat. But here is where the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath, meaning God instructs us how to live the Sabbath. It is God's ways, not our ways. And while for me the Sabbath has taken on a hugely different turn since I've been ordained a priest, I've really learned the way that the Lord leads us and guides us is oftentimes different than what we would rather do. What we ourselves think is holy or more pious, God has other plans. I remember about a year ago I was caught eating my peanut butter sandwich. Someone came to try to find me to talk to me, and I told them the rule. And they're like, no, Padre, I'm, I'm really glad you're having something to eat. You, you work really hard. Sometimes we worry about you. And in many ways, it was a consolation to those parishioners than a scandal. And I think for each of us, when we're truly living the Sabbath as God calls us to, even though in some people's eyes it may not be the most pious, according to their means, it doesn't bring scandal. It brings about great inspiration in the Spirit. In our first reading, we see Samuel. You know, it's an interesting thing how this reading starts in chapter 16 of Samuel 1. I'm sorry, the first book of Samuel. And we see the Lord say to Samuel, how long will you grieve for Saul? You know, Samuel just had that meeting yesterday with Saul, basically saying, you have been rejected, you're no longer the king. One verse we didn't get to read was how Saul repented, but it wasn't good enough for God, even though Saul repented. And Samuel is very much torn because he spent a lot of time with Saul. He's worked with Saul. He's collaborated with Saul. But yet God is moving on and God chooses David. And notice God has an answer to every one of Samuel's questions about what about this? What about that? God's got a plan. It's interesting. Where does Samuel go? Bethlehem. And of course, we start to hear that drumbeat of the Messiah coming, going to Bethlehem to offer sacrifice. And it's in that sacrificial banquet that God points out David to Samuel to anoint him as the new king. And David wouldn't have been the first pick of anybody. In fact, he wasn't even invited to the banquet by his family. But that is exactly who God picked. 
I think for us so often, God chooses in ways that are beyond us. God ordains things in ways that are beyond us. I have to be honest, me being a priest is beyond my comprehension because it seems to me there are so many more people, so much more qualified than me, who could have done this and could have done a much better job. But yet it's obvious to me that God called me to be here. And even right now, working on my doctorate, you know, I, I wonder, it's like, you know, God, I know this is what God wants me to do. There's no doubt about it. But I can say, well, there's so many other things that could be getting done. There's so many, so many, so many. But this is where God has me. And I think for each of us, it's very easy for us to question. It's very easy for us to say, well, it could be this, it could be that. This could work better. That person, this person, this other person. But yet, this is the way God has it for us. This is the way he has ordained it. Just like God is the master of the universe, God's will is better than our own thoughts so often, especially when our thoughts are human reason and not divine wisdom. My brothers and sisters, as we celebrate this Mass, let us pray that we may be more docile, that we may look to the Lord for his will, that we may be quick to listen and slow to give God advice. And that in listening, we may hear his will. And even though it might break our heart, even though it might seem dangerous and crazy, that we may have the courage and the strength to stand with the Lord, to really recognize the way that he calls us to live our lives for the sake of the kingdom, for the sake of others, for the sake of ourselves. God bless you. And as we come to this Mass, we offer our prayers and petitions. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop William, all bishops, priests, deacons, all who serve in the church and our communities, that we will be ever more faithful to the way that God calls us to live our lives for him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for all the sick and suffering, all those who have hope, those who do not believe in God and those who care for them, those who have lost the regular practice of their faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for our parish communities, our own families. We pray that all of us may truly discern well the will of God in our lives, that we may not thwart the plans of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died, all those who will die this day, that they will know God's eternal love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers. Help us to be ever more faithful in the way that we live our lives. Help us to be docile, that we may always live by your will and not be a hindrance. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit to the vine and work of human hands it will become, our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of the sacrifice, this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to O Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim 
Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. But through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, and whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, 
Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind of minister to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of our, your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace, O Lord, be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I, Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Uh, this Mass today was for uh, Deacon Richard Sage. He passed away a couple of days ago. Deacon Sage was deacon at the first parish I lived at as a seminarian, um, which was Mary Mother of the Church in the Cross. Deacon Sage was a massive inspiration to me at the time. He was director of Catholic Charities, and he really set me on a path of really having a true concern for those in need and knowing that the church can do something about it. In Deacon Sage's invitation, I started working at the Catholic Worker Home in the Cross where we served meals three times a week. I got to see him in action, and it was a, a marvelous example that he set I also got involved with other things that we was involved in in town over my two terms in lacrosse as seminarian back-to-back uh, -back for a year total. And then Deacon Sage and I very much stayed in touch. I went and bothered him every time I was in lacrosse going to visit him and uh, remained very good friends. I had the pleasure of seeing him um, back in June. We had a fundraiser for our women's shelter. I'm on the board of directors for that and loyal, and uh, he came to do our keynote, and uh, unfortunately it was the last time I saw him, but it was a wonderful visit. So if you can keep Deacon Sage in your prayers, uh, he was only in his mid-70s, far, far, far too young, um, but uh, keep his family in prayer too, a marvelous family. Anyways, God bless all of you, I hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll definitely be in touch. Take care. Just one more thing, if you made it this far, thank you very much. Um, let's make YouTube a more Catholic place. Please subscribe, like, share this video with your friends. As you know, we have masses almost every day, but uh, let's try to make the YouTube algorithm really see the beauty of the Catholic faith. And please do look for other priests who are doing marvelous things on YouTube, other Catholic lay people. It's just marvelous how many great resources we have these days. Anyway, just thought I'd pass it along that the more active we are on these things, the more social media becomes Catholic. God bless you.